What's up, strugglers? What's up, strugglers? What's up, strugglers? What up, you strugglers? What's up, strugglers? What's up, you little struggle bugs? Hi, strugglers. <laughs> What's up, strugglers? What's up, strugglers? What's up, strugglers? What's up, you useless sack of sh you absolute piece of human garbage. How are you? I've been introducing my videos with Hey Strugglers or What's Up Strugglers or something, you know, something like that for almost two years now. And for the first time ever, somebody a few days ago commented about it and was very critical of it. I'm gonna try to read it to you um, and then I'll explain. Please, please, please change your tag. Hey losers, my bad, strugglers. Perhaps I do not know some seated joke, but if it were, it's beyond this channel. Hey people not making it enough, thanks for being a jackass. I love the channel and your content, but hey, you garbage worthless loser not making it, let me be fun. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Can I put that on a t-shirt? Do I have to get his permission? <laughs> Let me be fun. You talk a one being accountable. Be accountable and don't address your followers less when you're trying to give them a emotional bump. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. I don't know what this guy's going through, so I'm not trying to put him down or whatever. He obviously had some emotional response to hearing me call him a struggler, but nobody has ever reacted that way to my intro. Hey, strugglers, what's up, strugglers? Everybody seems to really enjoy being called a struggler because whether we like it or not, gosh darn it, we're all struggling with something. It is in no way meant to be demeaning or putting anybody down because I myself am also a struggler. And yes, when he said, perhaps I don't know some seated joke, you don't, obviously. I figured for the people who don't know where it came from, I would explain. This goes back to the summer of 2018. I posted a video called The Struggle for Small YouTubers. We're already getting somewhere. In that video, I talked about how I was having a really hard time balancing my full-time day job with my YouTube career. At that point, I think I had 30,000 subscribers and I was trying to grow my channel and I was convinced that if I had just quit my day job, I would be able to do YouTube full-time eventually. So I was having this like internal struggle where I didn't know if I should stay at work because I had bills to pay. Having a job is safe, but it's also necessary. I need money, I have rent and loans, I have to have money. So having a full-time job is like, that, that's helping me with that aspect of my life. I think every time I make a video, most of the time, it's better than the last one I made. That's the way it works. The more you work on something, the better you get at it. And I want to be working on things. I want to be getting better at this, but I don't have the time because I need to be at work. If I didn't have that full-time job, then I'd be able to focus all of my time and energy on this YouTube thing, which I love and I'm more passionate about than I've ever been about anything else. But then I wouldn't have money, you see? But if I don't focus on this YouTube thing, then it's never gonna turn turn into anything. It's the biggest catch-22 that I've ever been involved with in my life! And at the end of that video, I said, I love you guys. We're all just a bunch of strugglers and we're struggling together. I am the king of the strugglers, okay? But at least we're struggling together. I'm not saying, hey loser, hey dumbass. <laughs> it's meant to be endearing and inviting and I think that we can all relate to it on some level. I'm still struggling, okay? I know in that video I said, I won't consider myself a YouTuber until I hit 300,000 subscribers. I think I said that. And I've done that, I passed 300,000 subscribers, but my mindset hasn't changed at all. I thought that I would get to this point and be like, all right, I did it, I made it, I'm successful, I'm a YouTuber now. If nothing else, I feel more pressure now. I feel more of a struggle now than I did then. You guys ever mess with Mio? It's so good. So just in case anybody else was wondering if I was insulting you all along, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a struggler, you're a struggler, we're all strugglers, but at least we're struggling together. On that note, I wanna address another comment that I got on my last video. It's from a girl who is a subscriber to me, so I, I didn't I didn't think that this was malicious in any way. I thought maybe she's just making a joke, but either way, I, I wanna address it. So in my last video, after my sponsor read that I did, I said, and when you support them, you are supporting me because then they keep sponsoring videos and you keep getting fun, silly little content like this. Isn't that great? And in response to that, uh, this girl who I will censor, she said, I like how you imply that you need money to make videos of you watching videos when you don't. You just want the money. <laughs> um, no, I don't need money to watch videos. I need money to pay bills. <laughs> when I accept a sponsorship from a company and they pay me to do it, I'm not taking that money and just throwing it in a big pile of gold like Scrooge McDuck. I'm using that money to make car payments, uh, pay off my student loans, pay my rent. I need to also buy soap 
and stuff. <laughs> I use money for the same things that you use money for. Do you go to work? Why do you go to work? <laughs> this is a job just like any other job. So no, I don't need money to make videos of me watching videos. I think most of you understand that, but just in case some people are still confused as to why people accept sponsorships in 2020, now you know. <laughs> Another question that I got a lot on that last video, wow. So many people were commenting or messaging me saying, why did you change the title? Why did you change the thumbnail? And I thought that this was common knowledge that YouTubers change their titles and thumbnails, but I guess not, so I'll explain why. When I first posted that video, I think the title was learning how to flirt with my fiance. And this is what the thumbnail looked like, <laughs> okay? When you upload a video, you can see all of your analytics and how a video is performing, how it stacks up against uh, your previous videos that you've posted. And that video with that title and that thumbnail was performing very, very poorly. The percentage of people that saw the video and clicked on it was lower than most of my other videos. So what YouTubers do, we all do this. Mr. Beast has openly talked about this. This is not a secret. You tweak certain things in order to, you know, try to get more people to be interested in your video. Learning how to flirt with my fiance with this ugly, terrible, horrible thumbnail. Clearly people did not want to click on that. So I changed the title and I changed the thumbnail. Here's what it is now. And ever since I changed it, look at how my analytics changed. I mean, this right here, you can see this point. This is when I changed the title and thumbnail. So yeah, that's why I changed the title and thumbnail on some of my videos, period periodically after I upload them. And now for the grand finale, three really quick hitters. These are comments that I get all the time, constantly, that I never address because it's hard to address all of them, so I just have avoided it. But I will finally address them now, so now I can just link people to this video every time I get this question or response or whatever. The first one is, where did your verification badge go? I used to have a verification check mark next to my name. Uh, I got it last summer, uh, in like July, I think. It was after I crossed 100,000 subscribers, you have to apply for it. So I applied for it and then within a couple of days I had the check mark. So I was a verified user, I felt great, it was awesome. But then um, in November or December, I'm not entirely sure. In the back end of YouTube, you can change your channel from a personal account to a brand account. And the only reason you do that is so um, other people can have access, like your brand managers or whatever, can have access to your analytics to see certain things. So as I started working with more brands, I switched over from a personal account to a brand account, so things were easier. And when I did that, um, I lost my profile picture and my verification badge disappeared. I don't really know why, I've never really got an answer as to why that happened, but I just, you know, re-uploaded my profile picture, so that's fine. Um, but my verification badge is just gone now. I've messaged YouTube about it, I've talked to contacts about it, and they say just reapply and whatever, it, you, then maybe you'll get it back. Which seems silly that I have to reapply because I was already approved for it. I used, I had it in the past, so I shouldn't really have to reapply, but whatever, no big deal. Uh, I'll just reapply. And I have reapplied uh, six months ago. <laughs> Remember when everybody caused a big stink about YouTube was gonna take away verification badges and make it harder for people to get them? Uh, and then they were like, oh wait, everybody hates that idea? Shoot, okay, we won't do that. We actually won't do that. They kind of still did that. So that's the sad story of how I lost it for really no good reason and I now don't have a check mark. So I look like a just a regular spam account. <laughs> the next thing is on my um, Arthur video, the bleep video, I had said, there's not just a guy on set bleeping things out in real time, right? They do that in post afterwards. Obviously, right? <laughs> because when I was a kid, this episode of Arthur made me believe that there was somebody sitting there bleeping out the swear words as the actors said them. And you would not believe the number of comments that I got from people who are like, well, actually, in live TV, there is somebody there bleeping things. Guys, duh. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not talking about live TV. I said they edit it in post. How would you edit live TV in post? I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. Guys, I know that there's somebody bleeping things out in real time on live TV, okay? <laughs> I used to work in live TV, for goodness sake. I'm not even exaggerating. Hundreds of comments about that. <laughs> and the last thing, my One Hit Wonders video. The most controversial video I've ever posted. I understand now that Duran Duran 
and Thin Lizzy are not one-hit wonders. And there's other ones on that list too that are not one-hit wonders. My brother and I sat down and did the research for this video, trying to find lists of one-hit wonders, and there are only so many that even exist. And we wanted to put a list together that everybody would know pretty much all of the songs. So we took some liberties, we had some wiggle room, and the list was not perfect because of that. We missed some things. Duran Duran is apparently a super popular band, we did not know that. Aha, uh -huh, that had Take On Me as their one hit wonder. Apparently they had a successful career in Europe, but not in America, so we didn't know that either. It's not a perfect bracket. It's just supposed to be a little bit of fun. So I know that people are still gonna be commenting that Duran Duran is not a one hit wonder on that video. I know, guys, <laughs> I get it. Do you see how much I'm struggling? Obviously, I am one of you, okay? <laughs> so there you have it. Gosh, that's good. Thank you for joining me on my second channel. And uh, yeah, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna post videos on here periodically. Like I said, I've posted a video already. So if you haven't seen that, maybe go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.